everybody, Michael here from GetFitOver40.com and I'm doing another tech video. Uh, whenever I switch hardware platforms or do anything kind of uh, different than what I've been doing all along or if I switch to you know, get a new camera or a new laptop that I'm going to incorporate into my video editing per se or my just my daily kind of like doing stuff whether it be personal or whether it be kind of business like videos, YouTube stuff. If I'm going to use something that's going to help me get through my day, really at the end of the day, get through my day and just simplify things or make things easier, then I like to share it with everybody. And I did make a video about my Chromebook here. This is the Asus uh, C302, I believe. And I've been using this for about four years. It's been great, um, you know, four years out of a computer. It's actually still pretty current when you compare it to uh, today's Chromebooks, it's still pretty killer. It's got lots of RAM and lots, you know, it's got like eight gigs of byte of RAM and then 64 gigs of internal storage, which is pretty good for a Chromebook, but it's a tablet. It's like high resolution 1080p screen. Uh, it flips around, it runs Android apps. It does everything. So it's really still current. But this video is about my new iPad Pro 11 inch. This is a 2020 model. And you can see it's quite a bit smaller. So if I put them uh, together, you can see quite a bit smaller, right? And so the reason I'm doing this is just, it's time for a change. And I had an iPad back in the day, the, I think one of the very first iPads, and this is actually the case that I got for it. And so this fits in there nicely, even with my big case that I'll show you in a bit, everything fits into this bag. It's super portable. Back in the day when I had my first iPad, we're talking well over 10, 12, I'm not even sure. It was ages ago. Basically what an iPad was back then was just a big screen iPhone. It was just a higher resolution iPhone. The apps that you ran just kind of basically got bigger on the screen and it was just easier to see, but they really didn't, they really hadn't optimized a lot of the apps to, to the iPad they were, they'd have over time. And you know, over the years it's been getting better and better. And most applications are optimized to, to conform to the iPad and do a lot more and have more features and things on the screen than your typical iPhone would allow because it's a bigger screen, right? So that makes sense. And um, the iPad really has come a long way. It Now it's um, essentially, let me just got Face ID. Let's go back. I mean, now essentially it's edge to edge almost or pretty close to edge to edge, really small bezels compared to back in the day, even old, even a few years ago, a lot bigger bezels on the iPads. The screen resolution is insane. You know, it's, it's super high resolution, higher than 1080p, not 4K, but really high resolution screens. Um, you know, so it's amazing the color, they're LCD panels, but they're one of the highest quality LCD panels you can get. And the apps really work really great now and you can multitask really well with these guys. Um, you can um, even run like full web browsers now. So before when you ran a web browser, like say Chrome or Safari, on even on your iPhone now <clears throat> versus uh, the iPads, you would get the sort of mobile version. And sometimes the mobile version didn't allow you to do certain things, especially when you were when you're editing YouTube stuff or you're on your YouTube channel and you're used to being able to do things a certain way when you're running the mobile version of that app it's different and sometimes features aren't even there that you can, that you're used to using. So I like that you can run, um, for instance, I can run the YouTube app and it simplifies things a little bit. Sometimes I'm a little bit faster depending on what I'm doing using the mobile YouTube app, or I can run Chrome for instance, full screen and run YouTube on there, log in and do all my stuff and upload videos and all those things and have all the menus and things where I'm used to them in Chrome. So I like that I have both options because obviously on a smaller screen, the mobile app sometimes is more efficient, but sometimes you want those, those more pro features when you're wanting to use a full screen, full, you know, desktop type browser. So the iPad really is allowing you to do that. Um, and recently now you can, like we've always been able to connect to keyboards, but recently now you can connect to trackpads and mice and all kinds of things. So you've got the touch screen and now you can connect to, and I'll show you in a second, um, a, a nice little case that I bought that has a trackpad built in. It's actually powered by the iPad because the iPad has these little smart connectors on the back that powers the what, whatever external device you're using super small, like I'll show you the cases really quickly. I've got this little thin case that I can put it in if I would just want to protect it, you know, and I don't need to have an external keyboard or mouse. I'm just going to basically be browsing stuff, for instance. Uh, but if I do want 
even more connectivity options. I've got this Logitech keyboard that has a trackpad built in. It connects to the smart connector. Let's put that in right now just to show you. Okay. All right, we just turned it off. Turn it back on. And what's really nice about this Logitech keyboard is you can use it a number of different ways. You can fold it right up, use it as a tablet. You can kind of prop it like this, put it on your lap and just sort of watch stuff with an angled screen. Or of course you can put it on a desk like this and type away. It has a backlit keyboard. Uh, it protects the iPad nicely. It also um, allows a spot for you to put your Apple pen or whatever pen that you're using magnetically attaches there. You also got a little thing you can put it in there if it's not a magnetic pen. This isn't the Apple pen, but it does allow me to, if I turn it on, it does allow me to, you know, use the, the, the trackpad or the, uh, the screen like I would my finger, but I can also do my drawing and, and whatnot with it. So that's really cool. Um, that's come in handy. And, uh, you know, backlit keyboard with, with all these um, function keys at the top working trackpad let's see here there we go so working trackpad uh finger gestures so i can do multi-finger gestures on the trackpad just like i would on a normal trackpad so very very cool so if i load up something like this right i can do multi-finger scrolling all of those things resizing right all of that with the trackpad or i could use a screen so really really cool um this is the Again, the 11 inch, it's just a 128 gigabyte because what I'm gonna do is, um, and a couple reasons why I got this I'll get into, but what I'm gonna do is some video editing. I'm gonna use this for my, when I'm out and about, when I'm on vacation or just wanna get out of my office and do some video editing, then I can do it on here because I'm gonna use a program called LumaFusion. You can uh, check that out. There's tons of videos on LumaFusion. It's essentially a pro app that allows me to do 4K video editing. It, you know, multi-track texts, you know, you can do green screen. I mean, you can literally do anything or most pro editing supports all sorts of different codecs. Uh, you name it, you can do it on here. And it's it's a pro app with tons of versatility. And that's one reason why I'm switching back to the iPad or the Apple platform, I guess, because I do my video editing on the Mac uh, using ScreenFlow for most of my stuff when I'm on my desktop. When I was away, I would actually do my video editing on my Android uh, Samsung Galaxy phone. Um, and I'd use an app called, I think Action Director is the name of it. I can't remember, I think that's it. And it's a pretty good app, but it is limited. And the reason I'd use my Android phone is because a lot of times when I'm away, I would just take the video on the phone and just keep it all on there. It was easier to just keep it all in one place, edit there and then export to YouTube. And then I could just kind of go on YouTube and make my tweaks through a web browser and put all my texts and all the different things in there. And that worked pretty good in terms of workflow while I was away. This will just allow me to do even higher quality, quicker work, be you know more comfortable once I get used to the program. I really couldn't do that with my Chromebook. Um, it just didn't have the same level of pro apps uh, for video editing. And you're not gonna find on a Chromebook or on the Android platform in general as high level pro apps for video editing, photo editing. That's just kind of what the Apple platform's always been about. So there just is a lot more options in terms of pro stuff. Yeah, there's definitely apps you can get if you if you don't mind the basic stuff or pretty, you know, just non-pro stuff, really. And that's the thing. I just couldn't find like a really good pro video editor on this Android or Chrome, which is all the Google platforms so easily. So I'm going to kind of miss this guy. Is really a, a nice, you know, a nice computer. You can watch the video I did on it. You know, nice, again, nice high resolution screen and everything. A great keyboard, all kind of aluminum build and everything. You know, very Apple-like in terms of quality. Uh, you know, full flip screen and everything. Use it as a tablet. It's been great. But kind of what's going to happen for now is my workflow is going to be whatever camera I want. So right now I'm recording in 4K on my Insta360. I'm going to basically uh, pair that because I've got there's a 360 app that I can pair that to and bring my uh, footage in via Wi-Fi because it's just easy enough. I don't mind waiting a bit. I'll usually just go and have lunch while I'm importing stuff or do something else. And then once it's in here, I can export it uh, right to the device, bring it into Insta or sorry, into uh, what's the name of the program now? Uh, uh, for totally forgot the name of the program. Here, let me find out. I'm so so new to this stuff, so let's find out. F uh, Fusion, something, what the heck is it called? Uh, AV editing. LumaFusion, there it is. So 
I'll just open it up real quick. I don't have anything going on, but here's LumaFusion while I'm in here. And uh, yeah, I could bring stuff into here. You can see it's, it's your full editor. I don't have any footage in it right now, but I will shortly. I'm going to bring an audio track in and the video track, sync them all up. And then I'm going to have uh, some texts and whatnot and some editing. Nothing crazy, but I've got some gunk on here. That's the one thing with these trap with these touch screens is you get stuff on them, lots of grease, but you can clean it off anytime you want. So I'm going to be using this program, um, and then I'll pretty much just you know if I want to. The nice thing is is I've got this memory card here, this card reader. This is like a 256 gig card. If I want to keep things really small, I could. If I wanted to bring this in, say off of my Android phone, I could plug it into the USB C on my Android phone and put the uh, information on here put it on in here and then download it or bring it into my uh, into my iPad, do all my editing, and then when I'm done, I can export it to this guy, which is a Toshiba two terabyte drive. You can get, um, actually, uh, you can get solid state versions that are even smaller, but they're more money and usually smaller, less amounts of space unless you're willing to shell out a lot of money. But this was like 80 bucks, it's two terabytes, it's going to be fast enough for just moving files around. I won't be editing video off of here. I'll be putting the video right on my iPad temporarily to edit it. And then when I'm done editing the videos, I'll then export it back here for storage, long-term storage, uh, just to keep those files if I want to ever go back and edit them or, or bring stuff into other projects. And the neat thing with LumaFusion is you can export um, your whole, I guess, project as a compressed file and store it you know, and then bring it back in later if you want to work with that that file, that project later on. So that allows me to work on stuff really quickly, you know, with super responsive, uh, you know, edit flow on here when the files are on there because I've got enough room for that to work with, you know, a number of probably a number of projects at once. Once I'm done editing those projects, store them on my drives. And then, you know, again, if I ever need them later on, I can do that. So pretty cool. I, I hope some of you geeks might be kind of interested in all this stuff. The other thing that's, that you probably want if you have an iPad is some sort of USB hub. Uh, this one allows me to hook up HDMI. Now the HDMI external monitor support isn't fantastic. It's basically just um, a mirroring of the screen. So you can go to a 4K screen and get nice high resolution, but you're probably going to get bars. There is a program, I can't remember the name, that allows you to kind of put other things on the secondary screen, but it's a little bit laggy. It's kind of like a mirror, like a, like a, I can't really explain what it is, but it's not true split screen. It's not like you get two separate screens. You got your screen here and then your secondary screen um, that's, you know, directly connected to the HDMI and supported by the hardware. That might come. I'm thinking, you know, the video processing cards on here are pretty robust, so I don't see why Apple can't make a split screen option uh, to, to be able to do, you know, kind of similar, have multiple monitors. This would be monitor one and whatever your other monitor would be monitor two. But this guy lets you at least have a bigger screen if you want that, so that might come in handy. You've got your card readers on it, you've got other USB ports. Um, you've also got, so you can plug into here and still have another USB-C charger connected to it and keep things charged up and powered up so that you know you don't have a dead battery partway through your session while you're trying to move files around or while you're mirrored to a monitor. So all that's really cool, of course, you know, the uh, Apple Pen or whatever. This isn't an Apple Pen, it's a third-party pen. It was like it was like $35 instead of $160. It doesn't give me the grading that, that an Apple Pen would, but it works almost exactly the same in every other way. So that's really cool. I think, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I think I've shared enough information to pique your interest. And uh, this video will be edited using LumaFusion. So it might look a little different than my other videos. I've gotta bring over some graphics and things to make the project look kind of similar. I'm going to work uh, at doing that just so that I have some interesting kind of so I have my at least my intro and outros and things like that that look kind of similar to what you're used to seeing. But once I get them on here, I'll have them all the time and I can use those in all my upcoming videos or future videos. All right. Thanks for watching another Get Fit Over 40.com video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, take care.